Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your Daily Breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about 10 major signs of love bombing. And in this video, I'm going to give you 10 signs. You can sort of score like what shows up for you in terms of if you think you are being love bombed, if you think you are a love bomber. Um, and I think it's really important to recognize that we can love bomb from a place of insecure attachment, but there are focal and very important features that separate um, insecure attachment styles for somebody who may have some, some unhealthy patterns in relationships that may need to actually take a time out from relationships and go do some internal work on themselves. And I'm going to point out which of those 10 signs are really important to recognize today, especially so that if anybody is on the receiving end of any of these signs, they can recognize, hey, this may not be healthy to be receiving from a partner or a person that I'm with and can just like reconsider really healthy boundaries and, you know, decide how to proceed from there. So I will go through 10 signs. If you want to like score yourself, this isn't some kind of like diagnosis based on your score out of 10, but you can sort of just get a feel for like where you're at or where you're at in terms of being on the receiving end of some of the love bombing. Like, is this to an extreme? Is this just a little bit? Um, and you can sort of get a pen and paper ready. If you'd like to give yourself a score, if you are very strong on one, you can give yourself a full point. If you sort of do some stuff, like this, you could give yourself half a point. Again, this isn't this like very strong output of anything. It's just to give you a general idea. So the very first sign is extreme romantic gestures. And this is pretty self-explanatory, but this can be like over the top sort of grandiose things like bringing, you know, excess of flowers all the, you know, every day to your workplace or, um, you know, sending you food every day for lunch, you know, extreme romantic gestures. Number two, excessive compliments. Um, and the really interesting thing about this is when we see this more related to like love bombing that exists within narcissistic relationships, we often see these like excessive compliments happen um, a lot, very soon, very quickly to the point where often people who are on the receiving end of this, if it is in the case of like narcissism, perhaps, um, the person's usually jarred by this a little bit. They're usually like, whoa, this is a lot very soon. And they actually feel like more uncomfortable than flattered. And then over time, the really interesting thing about excessive compliments is because they produce an emotional response. And because there's repetition, we know that repetition plus emotion programs the subconscious mind. So what we actually have is this programmable, addictive type of emotional association that takes place over time where we start getting like a fix from this to a certain degree, right? We get this like repetitive program of a good emotional feeling. And then if that takes gets taken away or gets stripped back, we can sort of feel like the grievance or the loss behind it. Um, so you see some of these dynamics sort of existing very, very early on in a narcissistic dynamic. But of course, if somebody's just insecurely attached, they may be giving somebody an excess of compliments that they're in a relationship with because um, that could highlight how much they put somebody on a pedestal, right? So anyway, so that's number two. Number three, excessive communication and attention. Um, these are things like really like nonstop calling, communicating, being in touch on the phone, calling all the time, you know, throughout the course of the day, showing up at your workplace to visit, like all these different things um, where it can be again, like it can create some of that dependency. Um, but if it's an extreme access, I don't mean like you chat with your partner throughout the day um, in the dating and honeymoon stage of a relationship where you touch base throughout the day fairly frequently, like every few hours or whatever it might be. Um, but I mean like excessive, like excessive, excessive, like it's all day, every day, throughout the day. And usually when we're talking about more extreme love bombing, we also see things like if somebody goes missing um, for an hour, let's say, and doesn't respond, you may get like an onslaught of calls or texts or things like that. And I want to be clear, like, um, it may feel like the, the person, if, if this is like narcissistic behavior we're looking at here, it may feel like the person is anxiously attached, but you will see a very strong, um, tendency or capacity to become avoidant at times, but this is usually after the dating and honeymoon stage after they're sort of like the, the hooks are in, so to speak. Um, so anyways, number four, and this is where we get into like the unhealthy component or one of them, um, is there's an overstepping of boundaries. And this is a really important um, thing that we have to distinguish. If you set a boundary, so let's pretend you've got like this excessive communication that's happening throughout the day. And let's say that it's, um, 
you know, you're, you're talking to your partner all the time. Let's say it's to an F you're full avoidant and an anxious preoccupied and both have an anxious leaning side in the, in the dating and honeymoon stages of relationships. We know that there can be a lot of communication and connection, but let's say instead that one person sets a boundary and says, I'm going to be with family all day Sunday, or I'm going to be at a family reunion for three hours. I'm not going to be available at that time. Um, you know, I may not be able to chat as much during that time either. So when somebody's just like anxiously attached, um, they, they may be like, Oh, I miss you. And, and, you know, maybe even like send you a text during the time. Like, I hope your family reunion is going well, whatever it might be. When we are talking more in like the realm or spectrum of narcissism, one of the, the tendencies we are likely to see is actual anger, punishment, spitefulness, or complete overstepping of boundaries when you've actually set a boundary there. And it's like, um, I can't believe you didn't even look at your phone for that two hours. I can't believe, you know, and this anger, um, even things like overstepping of boundaries, like calling in excess anyways, um, or showing up at the family reunion as a surprise, even though you didn't ask for that. And so you'll see this like overstepping of boundaries. Um, and, and oftentimes that's a red flag. Now, not everybody who does that is, is narcissistic or, or a narcissist, but these are red flags to, to pay attention to because what does that look like five years into a relationship? It looks like you are forced to be boundaryless if you, do, if you want to avoid conflict. And that's not a healthy way to have a relationship. Um, number five, and by the way, if you wanna do a deeper dive into this, if I have a full like almost two hour webinar on love bombing and intermittent reinforcement and how to actually reprogram your subconscious mind's way out of this. Um, and you can check it out for free for seven days um, by clicking on the link in the description box below. And then when you enter into the webinar library, you can actually go through this. It's actually like reprogramming. If you were struggling to break free of a relationship, if you're kind of hooked to, to somebody, um, if you're trying to get out of like keeping going back to something that's only intermittently reinforcing you and you know it's not healthy for you and not a right fit, there's like very deep um, tools and, and a clear specific way of how to reprogram this. I'm not going to be able to cover this all in this video. This video is like already long. I'm only at number five. Um, but you can keep a lookout for that as well. And you can use the link in the description box below and then enter into the webinar library and just search in love bombing. Um, and you'll see it come up and it's very, very detailed and will really help with like steps you can take anyways. Okay. Number five, grandiose claims about love. Um, this is a really interesting one. So a lot of times when we're talking more about like um, narcissism specifically in the context of love bombing. So we can kind of like delete this one out if it's just an insecure attachment style. Sometimes this can kind of exist along a continuum as well. But like when we're talking about like narcissism, um, there will be a lot of these like really strong claims, things like nobody loves like we love. Nobody has a relationship like we have a relationship. Everybody's jealous because we, nobody, you know, feels like, like you about, you know, feels like, um, I am having a hard time saying this feels like the way I do about you and other relationships, or I, I hope that kind of makes sense in a way. It's like, nobody really feels for you. Like I feel for you and other people's relationships aren't like ours, that sort of dynamic. So you'll see a lot of these dynamics, these kind of like grandiose claims, comparisons, uh, a lot of like pitting people against each other through love bombing. Like, oh, your friends are just jealous of you because I love you so much. Um, your friends are just um, wishing they had a relationship like ours. And it's like, why are we creating, um, you know, disparity? Why are we creating like separation um, and a disconnect between you and your friends? Why do you have to compare your friends' relationships to your relationships? Everybody can have a, a wonderful relationship in their own way and everybody deserves to feel love. But you'll see this sort of like separating out and kind of creating space and distance um, that happens through the form of, of love bombing. It's almost like something, it's like a little bit insidious. If it's in the case of narcissism, it's like something that's good being turned into something to kind of use against you indirectly. And when I say use against you, it's usually just because the narcissist has such deep fears and insecurities and is so afraid of attaching and attachment means loss to them at a subconscious level, um, that it's really a, the narcissist controls because they fear um, and finds ways to control and manipulate because they think they can't get their needs met otherwise, but um, it also doesn't make it okay. And one big thing, and you'll hear it if you ever go into this, this in-depth webinar that I talk about is like how to make sure that we are not, we can have compassion, we can see somebody, we can understand them, but that's also not an excuse to use our own compassion as a weapon against ourselves. And we have to be able to recognize, hey, I can have compassion and care for somebody, but that doesn't mean it's a justification for me to then hurt myself by totally violating my own boundaries and putting up with things that are not okay for me and not healthy for me in a relationship. But that's its own separate topic of conversation. Um, I'll go on to number six. I feel like there's so much I want to share in this one video. Um, but if you're interested, go check out the webinar because there's tons of stuff in there. You can check it out for free for seven days. 
Um, okay. Number six, um, there's a lot of sharing of affection and feelings quite quickly. So I don't mean like the compliments we talked about. I mean, like, I love you can be said really early, like really, really early. Um, we can hear people say things like, um, oh, I just, I'm falling in love really early. I have such strong feelings for you. I've never felt in a relationship like this before. These are really nice things. And again, don't take like one sign and be like, oh, it's a narcissist or something like that. Like one of these things on their own can just be somebody insecurely attached or can even be somebody with just a tremendous amount of feelings because you represent a lot of meaning to them in their lives. Um, but when we have like a whole bunch of these on the list, we're looking at, okay, hey, we're moving down the continuum further and further towards love bombing behaviors. Um, so you'll see like sharing of, of affection and feelings very, very quickly, very strong um, attestations of like somebody's feelings. Number seven, um, saying a lot of things you want to hear. Something that's really interesting about love bombing as it per pertains more to narcissism is that a lot of narcissists really know how to like capitalize on the things you want to hear and the things that you really need and also really know how to capitalize on the things that hurt you and the things that poke at you um, and can be kind of masters at that. And so, you know, when you have a lot of these things that it's like, oh, saying what you want to hear, they'll know exactly what you need to hear and need. Um, and they will sort of speak into those things a lot of the time, which in a sense can be nice to feel like somebody sees you and hears you. But in another sense, if those things are deep missing childhood wounds, okay? So let's say, for example, somebody makes you feel really seen and really validated. And let's say you were really missing those things in childhood. Then one thing you have to be careful of is that you can sort of run the risk of developing a bit of a dependency on, on that, those needs being met. And it can keep you hooked and, and make you sort of tune out other red flags, which will be important to be able to reprogram later if, in fact, you are in an unhealthy relationship of any form, noticing that you're hooked and having a hard time leaving for those reasons and want to separate out those things so that you can reprogram and continue to move on and feel healed and feel like you're, you're in a good place to move on. So anyways, that's number seven. Number eight, excessive promises. And this is a really interesting thing is sometimes these promises are also broken. Sometimes it's a lot of words, um, but not a lot of follow-up. And it's important to note that in a relationship because at the end of the day, words are really nice and they can make us feel warm and fuzzy, but actions are going to matter the most long-term. And so it's important to sort of like look at that in the relationship. The person says they're going to communicate more kindly to you and be more respectful, but do they? And I don't mean, are they perfect at it? I mean, is the needle moving? Um, so, you know, paying attention to that is going to be really important for anybody in any type of relationship. Number nine, one of the, the characteristics or signs associated with love bombing is um, prying a lot, believe it or not, like being a little bit invasive, but then these things being justified as like for your safety, for your well-being, for your own good. And sometimes there's this like kind of indirect overstepping of boundaries where it's like, I'm giving you all this love, but I'm like, where are you? Where are you now? Where are you now? And it's like, oh, Friday, you said you were with your friend, but where are you? It's been an hour. Are you still with your friend? And kind of like a lot of these things, they can feel like the person's really looking out or really caring. But at the same time, those aren't really healthy things long-term. Like you want to feel trusted and you want to feel like you have interdependence in your relationship where you each have a healthy, stable sense of self and a connection in the relationship too. But if you want to go spend some time with your friends for a few hours on the evening, you can, you know, to call your, your partner on the way, say, hey, I'm going to be with my friends this evening. I'll uh, give you a shout on my way home or I'll text you when I'm home or whatever it might be. And just spend time and be present in the other areas and, and facets of your life. Um, so just interesting to pay attention to. And number 10, um, love bombing more so associated with a narcissistic relationship is it starts off um, very early, very strongly, but then can easily flip um, into intense anger, um, hatred, resentment, um, spewing like really mean words and things like that long-term that are like kind of the exact opposite of those intense compliments that may have started off. So again, if you have a few of these things, fairly normal, especially if you're insecurely attached, um, you may have some extreme romantic gestures and lots of compliments for your partner. You may want to spend a lot of time together, things like that. But as you start seeing a lot of these things, particularly like the um, flips into really negative stuff and negative words, prize a lot, invades your boundaries, um, a lot of comparison between relationships, a lot of that grandiosity, everybody's jealous of you and of us and of how I love you and of me and you know all these different things. That's where we're really looking for those red flags and seeing that that's unhealthy territory. And especially even things like excessive promises not being followed through upon, okay? Follow, followed, followed through upon, I think. <laughs> 
sometimes I talk so much, it just all jumbles up after a long time. Um, anyways, so I hope this makes a lot of sense. Um, again, if you want to do a deeper dive, please check out that webinar. It's very, very helpful. Tons of amazing resources. And again, it's two hours. You can sit down and watch it in a sitting and, um, and it can just help subconsciously reprogram getting stuck on somebody when you know it's time to go, or if you think it's an important time to leave, or if you just don't want to be like hooked on an ex from the past. Also, you can do the how to heal from a breakup course, of course, um, if you're feeling stuck as well, but and you can check that out for free for seven days too. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, all the resources, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.